It was an honour, it was a pleasure, it was something I always wanted to do. Um, I have to say, and, and uh, not the same old cliche, but it was you know, the proudest time in my career, playing for my country, having the opportunity to represent a young up-and-coming football nation and trying to leave a mark at, in world football. So being a part of that for me was the most important part of my career. I feel like it was the game that I uh, still dream about now. It's, it was the perfect, the perfect game, the perfect lead up. Um, I've never been to a game where I've seen an Australian crowd so behind their nation, which, which I don't think will be replicated for a long, long time still. So to be a part of that game was, was a fantastic experience and I'm very proud of it. I think there was not any expectation, so the actual fact that we're there was a feat in itself. And I think the players were at the top of their game. We had a fantastic squad of players. Um, and we had not a great deal of pressure because nobody really expected us to do anything. So when we achieved the goal of going through the group, I think everybody was over the moon and you know we got a lot of credit for the work that we've done which was well deserved but in football uh, you know it's all about that next game I'd probably say the Brazil game even though we lost to be able to put a world power like Brazil under pressure like we did for long spells during the game and maybe not get the result that we deserved for me was a highlight uh, people would say, well, why were you lost? But considering what we've done in that game, we should have got more out of it. And against Brazil, who for me is the best footballing nation in the world. So um, that was my highlight of the World Cup. I think the 2010 World Cup was um, different in that there was more expectation. I think people were becoming a little bit unrealistic with the expectation and I don't think the majority of the players were on top of their game like previously. Pretty much simple as that. Um, and we were so close to passing the ground and passing the group stages as well. So I think um, two totally different periods and definitely the negative was the unrealistic expectations on the team. I, I decided while I was on the pitch that I was no longer going to play and um, I'd already thought about it a little bit before and um, it was a pretty easy decision. Um, something that I suffered inside but it was the right decision to make. I was a privileged footballer. I was lucky to play in the best league in the world for 10 years. Then I moved to England for four years. I was able to represent my country for a long time. So I was not going to cry over the fact that I was not able to decide when I was going to retire. I just thought, you know, that's, that's life. And I'll just get on with phase two and I'll just do what I can to help football in the country with passion, with enthusiasm, in the right way for as long as I can. Determination, persistence, you know I had a fair few knocks in my younger years which, which drove me on. A lot of people questioned my ability. Um, a lot of them are the same people who try and pat you on the back now, but you know I, I know these people, I've seen through them. Um, and um, for me, it's just about that persistence and uh, determination. I recently um, acquired my FIFA player agents license and um, so I'm going to be looking at working with some young footballers in Australia 
and my goal is to try and change some of the trends which are maybe some or more often players choosing the Asian option which I do respect everybody's opinion but I would love to see our young players going back to Europe and following uh, a little bit more educated pathway and hopefully bring back the prestige of Australian football as being successful in Europe.